A very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us on the Friday edition of the show. It's the last one for the week, and we promise to make it worth your while. I'm Yemi Adebayo. It's day eight of uh, the 2022 Commonwealth Games in Birmingham. Good day for Team Nigeria. Two more gold medals in the bag. From my tone, you can feel that I'm excited and there's excitement in the air. We're going to be talking about everything that happened today. Uh, of course, Nigeria has also moved up on the medal table. We'll do that for you. As, um, as of now, the English Premier League has started. Arsenal and Crystal Palace currently slogging it out. We will also keep our eyes on that one as well. We'll also uh, listen to some of the managers as they prepare for the new season. We'll also take a look at the ITO Cup. We've not had time to really discuss the most glamorous cup competition uh, in Nigeria. That's the ITO Cup, the oldest uh, competition in the country. We'll talk about it as we move on on the show. Basically, that's the outlook of the show tonight. I urge you to sit back and relax as we take you on a trip across the money-spinning world of sports. As you already know, I usually don't do this alone. At some point, uh, my colleague Osno Kon Ackman will join in. He's on the field. He will be giving us uh, the details of everything that has transpired on day eight with special emphasis on the things happening in and around Team Nigeria. I also have a guest with me in the Lagos studio. I'll introduce him in a bit. So that's the outlook of the show. Again, I say join us as we take this trip together. Uh, like I said, I'm not alone in the Lagos studio uh, with me. And, uh, of course, today, making his debut, Shagun Vincent joins me. Shagun, greetings to you. Yeah, good evening. And that word debut kind of struck me somehow, you know. Uh, debut, of course, this is my first time being here. So, mm -hmm. basically, it's good to be back and it's good to have you too. So, um, I hope we'll be a ride on the show. Yeah, I hope so as well. Uh, so, uh, today is um, the hate, Commonwealth Games. Uh, should I say, what are the things that struck you today? High points of the day, Team Nigeria. The events of today, the results we've been able to get from the events, has it lived up to your expectation? Yeah, to some extent, you know, we've been winning medals. You know, we had a lot of artists go, go into the competitions, you know, over 19 sports, and we're participating in 10 sports. So um, we just want to go to the, the Paralympian, you know, the lady, she was outstanding, 130, 150, 155. Um, what else can we say? We have, we have, we're getting there, at least. We're not there yet, but we're getting there. And it's a massive progress from what, from what we, we were some years back. And uh, basically, taking this result into the next competitions and uh, probably to the Olympics and other competitions, Ahead, it's just a more uh, foster, foster, foster way of you know getting ahead in um, finding all, all, all cylinders for for such competitions. All right, uh, just to let you know, um, of course, uh, in the news, Odunai Adekoro a winning gold uh, today in uh, the 57th kilogram category women's freestyle wrestling event. By the way, that's a third Commonwealth medal, uh, third Commonwealth gold medal. We'll, we'll talk about her in, in detail as we move on on the show. She will be the focus of our discussion. Uh, Blessing of Borodudu as well, also won gold, uh, two of them making Nigeria proud and doing uh, what we actually expected them uh, to do. So it's been a good day for Team Nigeria. And we'll talk about, uh, of course, we've put out uh, the list of events that um, Team Nigeria athletes um, participated, competed in today. So we'll give you a breakdown of all of that. Because we're in a celebratory mood, let's quickly uh, listen to uh, one of the ladies that made us proud, brought us on the map. Let's talk about um, Falashade Olufemi Ayo, uh, of course, discussing a gold medal and all the things that transpired and how happy and elated she is. We'll listen to her. We'll come back for more on Sports Tonight. Uh, one day, my inspiration is God, and secondly, my lovely husband. Uh, yeah. Well, he said, ah, uh, my dear, I need you to go and get that goal. If you get that goal for me, then you go for the record. I said, okay. Well, uh, God is my creator. I first give it to God. God Almighty, then my husband. Well, the experience was so good. I love it. I love the fights. More record. 
<laughs> more of it. Uh, well, you know, uh, the competition is all about body weight. At least I, I said throughout yesterday without eating, just to meet up with the body weight. So thank God I meet up. So that's the top area I find out in the game. Oh, that's it. Very uh, elated, Oluwafemi Ayo. Of course, she dedicated a good medal to God and our lovely husband. And you, you listen to our, you listen to all of these. These para athletes uh, have to do to, to, you know, to to get us across the line and put us on the the map. And very, very uh, interesting day it has been. Shago, you listen to what you were talking about her earlier. Yeah, and yeah. She, has in a, uh, she has a standing, you know, she just broke the uh, personal record and the Commonwealth record. And she's also, she also married to a Paralympian to show you that um, the success is just like more like um, iron striking iron, you know. So, uh, yeah, she has been a it standing. Runs in the family. Uh, it runs in the family, you know, family blood, you know. And then uh, we probably, uh, your, your, your child should we'll probably take go to sports, you know. Uh, you know and there's no one in sports anyway. But then you look at it that um, she won 130, she, um, she did the 130, 150, 155. She has, she has been a standing. She showed the world that Nigeria, we have athletes, we have people who are who are, who are ready to fight for the country, to fight for the nation, to wear to to wear what is this to be, to wear that green white green jersey, and um, she just showed that. She showed that shoot class, and, and that's how she got the medal. She won the gold medal again. And if you look at her previous record, she has always been winning medals for medals at the previous Commonwealth record, record um, games in Australia. You look at it, and you can you can see that she didn't just jump to win the medal. She worked hard for it, and that's why she got the medal there. Well, what she has said that we must also highlight, she's calling for more support. Yes, yes, yes. Asking us to come to the aid of Paralympians. Yes, yes. That if that is done, yes. they will do more. Yeah, you, you see, um, the Paralympians don't get as much support like the regular athletes. You know, I've, I've, I've happened to be in some conferences, you know, some guys have trained support, but it's not enough. They can get more support, you know, more media coverage, more sponsorship deals. This can enable athletes to get more money, you know, be able to fly, be able to do certain things, medics, you know, financing. This will enable athletes, even other Paralympians, who, are, who, who have the talent, you know. Talent is not only about people that you see. There are people on the streets that have the talent, but they cannot um, show for because there's no, there's no platform. So more people coming into um, bringing more sponsorship who are able talents to show forth, you know, and come to the, to the podium. And that's why she has that opportunity because of the, what happened there and she's able to win the medal. So, so, so we have other people that are equally talented too that can do that. All right. Um, we're still going to listen to quite a number of people, but, but let me also get your thoughts. Uh, the current situation before we came into the studio, but you know, it's a fluid situation. It could yes. change. Just yes. as we are talking now, yes, yes. things could change. Yes. We were on the eighth position on the medal yes. table, seven gold, three silver, six bronze. It's day eight, four more days, yeah, roughly four more days of three, three, I think three, uh, of, of action. Have your expectations been met? To some extent, uh, at least we are doing better compared to the previous Commonwealth. Compared to previous tournaments, we have been doing better. You know, we already have 60 medals at, the, at this point in time. Anything can happen between now and the next four days. That's to tell you that there is hope for more medals. We already have guys already that are in the semifinals, and the finals, finals of, of, of events. various events. Even in the boxing, we have um, um, one, of our, one of our own already in the semifinals already, as of um, not, not quite long. So that's, tell, that's to tell you that there's a paradigm shift already. You know, we're already getting to the medal log. We're in the top 10 of the medals. So this is an advancement from where we were. It's like we're, 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 getting, we're coming out of Israel. We're coming out of that Egypt, you know, that's our, that our back home. That's when we used to have win medals, when we used to do a lot. Now we are doing a lot right now. People are now, people are now seeing that um, we have talent, and that's why we're showing forth it into the world. That's why. All right, we're showing forth uh, to the world what we are capable of doing if we provide the right environment, if we give encouragement to uh, the athletes. All right, uh, my colleague Austin Okon Ackman is ready. We're going to have that conversation uh, with him. Uh, greetings to you, Austin. Thanks for finding out time to be with us on the show. Party greetings to you, Yemi, and of course our viewers joining us from different parts of the world. Pretty much a beautiful day for Team Nigeria at the Commonwealth Games. All right, um, let, let, let's just go through, I mean, what has happened today, top of the pile, definitely, has to be those two gold medals. And I'm very sure you're as ecstatic as we are back in Nigeria, we we're monitoring. Uh, but quickly, help us uh, with the trail of events, how it all happened today. Uh, basically, it has to be, um, team wrestling and what they achieved 
uh, at the Commonwealth Games. We talked about them yesterday and we said no pressure because they just need to go out there and prove a point. And I think they did just that today. Even for those that didn't make it to the final, it was good learning uh, curve and experience for them. Uh, uh, fighters like uh, Messi, Adekroye. But her elder sister, Odoanyo Adekroye, showed calmness, showed professionalism, showed why she is the champion in that category and went on to win gold against India's Anshu Malik. She won that one 6-4 to win gold for Team Nigeria in the women's 57 kg category. So congratulations to Dwayne Adekroye. We mentioned her the other day when I spoke to the president of the Nigeria Wrestling Federation, Daniel Igali. Wanted to see how she will bounce back after that disappointing outing at the Tokyo Olympics. Dwayne uh, showed what was needed to prove that she is an absolute champ by winning gold today in a, in a bout. Also, blessing Oboro Dudu. What a story she's having. She won silver at the Tokyo Olympics came back, won, I think, a record 11th African uh, championship uh, title. And now at this Commonwealth Games, she won gold today again. Fantastic display by Blessing Oboro Juju to take Nigeria's gold to about six now. And then uh, it was also a good one for Esther Kolawale. Why do I say it's a good one? Because that's a good fighter for the future. Esther won bronze also for team wrestling. So we've got more events coming up tomorrow for wrestling. And hopefully they will put more medals into the bag for Team Nigeria. Track and field, I'm right here at the Alexander Stadium, just on the other side. Uh, Ruth Usoro is competing in the women's triple jump final. I hope that at the end of the day, she can do something. She's a fantastic prospect. She's just 24, uh, under the guidance of Coach Kyle Yaya And S.A. Brume, she's hoping to, you know, uh, create some record for Team Nigeria, win something in triple jump. And then also another one in long jump. Don't forget, she qualified for the long jump final today alongside Ace Brume. So that's a good one. I was expecting Team Nigeria to win something in the triple jump event and the long jump. For the men, a mixed fortune for our men's 200 meters, uh, 200 meters competitors. Uh, Udodi made it to the final. I spoke to him. He won his heat, but he didn't like his time. He says he's, he's trying to do this with... Uh, an injury that he's been trying to fend off, but it's not been easy. He described the race as difficult. He's through to the finals tomorrow. Hopefully, at the physio and the medical team, they'll find a way to, you know, push Doji to be ready for that one tomorrow. Uh, Ojele couldn't make it to the final, but good learning experience for him right there in the men's 200 meters. Um, Chukwe Buka in uh, I spoke to him. He finished fourth That's in the, the short put shot event. Yeah, in the shot put event. Uh, we were, look, it's not been a bad year for, for Chooks, but he also told me that he did this one again with the injury that he pushed himself so hard and then sadly he couldn't medal. He's pretty much disappointed about it, but in all he's saying that he, he has good lessons to learn from the experience, but I thought he could actually make it to the medal, but this is our world of sports where anything can happen. Patience, Okun Judge, ran the heat. In the women's 400 meters, I was watching that race. I thought she started well. She was also still looking good at the bend. Something must have gone wrong with patience from where I was watching because she started slowing down. Maybe she pulled a cramp or something, mm -hmm. and then she didn't finish that race the way she wanted. So, yeah, I mean, basically, that's about all I've seen today for Team Nigeria. Austin, let me, let me, let me butt in uh, quickly. Uh, of course, the viewers will forgive me if I don't quickly throw this in. Uh, a lot of focus was on Toby Lobo Amun show today. <laughs> and I'm wondering why that wasn't the first thing that you said, the whole world taking notice of her. She's a world champ. She's true to, uh, to the next level uh, in our competition. And I'm very sure, even on Twitter space and everywhere, a, a lot has been said about her. I know you mean, I, I, I try to, you know, take pressure off to be a Muslim because uh, I told you I spoke with her and she just wants to stay calm because she's the athlete to beat now. N nothing short of qualification when she stepped out today uh, for a heat. I knew that she was going to make it. I knew that she was going to win it. Uh, time doesn't matter, but it was under 12. Uh, so let's see what she can do. The record is 12.12. She owns it. She ran 12.06, uh, but the win did not let that record stand. So at this World Championships on Sunday, SA, um, Toby Amushan will come out and see if she can break her own record. 
But yes, everyone talked about it here today, but with the eat and, and someone who is a record holder, it was no news. She just came out, got the job done, and off she went. So she'll prepare for the final on Sunday. Uh, Shaw medal, yes, with current form, with what we saw at the World Championships, is for sure. But hey, look, this are all those sports. You never say never, but I'm sure... Toby Amosan can get the job done on Sunday. All right, let me throw this in for laughs. We're going to take a reaction in, in a bit. I'm looking at the medal table, and I can realize we're not far away from South Africa. I, I mean, just a couple of medals, and we might just be ahead uh, of them. And somehow, that makes me feel good for, for a nation that puts in a lot, and we're not really far away from them. I mean... Th that I should make anybody... I was losing audio for a minute. Just say that yeah, again. I was talking about South Africa. I was saying... Yeah. There's not much of a difference between the South Africans and Team Nigeria at, at, at this point. Okay, uh, it, it, it does appear Austin cannot hear me right now, so we, we, we'll try to sort that out. <laughs> okay, all right. Austin can hear me now. Let's get back to that conversation. I was talking about South Africa, uh, uh, and, and I said yeah. it's just for laughs, that we're not far away from each other, and with the way it's going, we might just catch up with them do you think that's a good litmus test? That's a yardstick that with all they put into sports and we, we don't seem to be far away from them, maybe we have punched beyond our weights in this edition of the Commonwealth Games. It would be good, you know, and as you said, for laughs, yeah, it would be good to, if we can, you know, top the, uh, uh, South Africa on the medals table. But don't forget, we came to this uh, Commonwealth Games with just nine sports. Mm -hmm. uh, South Africa competing in almost every competition at this uh, Commonwealth Games. But if with nine sports we, are, we can, you know, compete with them, then it means that, that uh, we're doing something good. We just need to find a way to get involved in more sports. We listened to Francis Orby last night. He was hoping that badminton would have been here, would have been good experience for our team, probably would have done something in the doubles or even in the team event. So South Africa, because they compete in more competitions, maybe might just go all the way to you know win more medals ahead of Team Nigeria. But see, I mean, what I know is now with seven gold, getting so close, four more, maybe five to break that record of 11 gold medals that has, you know, proven to be, you know, uh, elusive for Team Nigeria. This is not a bad competition if you take a look at it, but particularly with the way uh, our athletes are competing, uh, those who are uh, prospects are looking good, those who expect to sustain the momentum, they're doing, doing just that. I'm trying to put together a report about mm -hmm. S.A. Brome and Ruth Usara. If you take a look at what they've been doing with the jumps, they've been breaking record right from at the World Championships in Oregon. Both athletes have qualified for the long jump event. It's a good one for the future because we've just got Paris 2024 in front of Around us. Corner, so yeah. What Chukwe Bukaya did today, he did medal, but there are positives that he can take uh, to uh, the, the Olympics. The para powerlifters, same thing we saw yesterday. A lot of positives to take to the Paralympics. I just hope that our administrators will not get back home and then roll out the bed, stretch their legs and start sleeping and forget that 2024 is just around the corner. <laughs> I hope so too. Also, we need to take a breather. I want to listen to somebody you have called a prospect. Everybody's beginning to call uh, this young man uh, a prospect. Nigerian heavyweight boxer uh, in Fiain Oyewe. That's the next person we're going to listen to. Uh, and of course, I still have uh, Shagun with me. And, and of course, we'll take a look at uh, some of those things. So let's just quickly uh, listen to Nigerian heavyweight boxer in Fiain Oyewe as he's talking about winning gold at the Commonwealth Games. Oh, good guy. <laughs> okay, so... You tell me your name and who you are. My name is Ifa Emmanuel Onyoko. Awesome. You look at me, talk to me. What sort of experience was it for you there? Uh, it was nice. Um, my opponent came up with um, his own skills and I brought up my own uh, with my coaches who told me some things to do on the ring. And glory be to God, I won. Semi-finals will be tougher. Do you know your opponent? What should we expect him? Yeah, I know my opponent is a southpaw fighter, an Indian guy. I've seen him fight. I've seen him shadow boss part, so I'm going to go back to the gym and know what I'm going to build up to win. 
is it going to be a gold medal for a finalist competition? Yeah, I press you, I press you. That's my dream. That's what I'm building for years. And I believe I'm going to put on that gold on my neck. Coming here, did you get the right preparation that can give you gold? Yeah, yeah, I have the right preparation. I have my coaches and everybody. I have with the training. I have um. I have. All right, welcome back. Uh, of course, we're going to continue with where we left it off. We've been talking around the performance of team Nigeria. We've highlighted, our producers highlighted some of the things that you could call the high points of today, uh, the major things that uh, some of our athletes have been able to do. And of course, I say I have Shego visit with me, and we're looking at this together. Shego, you have on your screen the high points of team Nigeria performance on day eight. And you've talked about some of those things already. Let's start with S.A. Brome hitting the automatic qualification mark. At this point, Austin alluded to it. At this point, you're not trying to beat everybody. You just want to go to the next level. And that's, that's, that's the last thing we can and, say. And that's the most basic thing you have to do. And that's, um, you just saw that, that she's uh, made an automatic qualification into the next round. Uh, uh, for the, at this point in time, you're not looking to, like you said earlier, meet to the next level, qualify, so that you can, you can be guaranteed of minimum energy. Minimum, your energy, get to the finals. When you get to the finals, you are sure that you're having minimum of a medal. So from there, you get to the final, you know how to find your way around it and get your, probably, most likely get your, your goal because you are yet to and win. And that's why you're an athlete, because you want to win. And that's why you are getting the finals in the first place. All right. She left a distance of 6.81 meters on her second attempt to safely make it to the women's long jump final. This is what we expected yes, yes. and not coming as a surprise. All right, let's move on. Um, I mean, talk about this lady. What, what else can we say? Um, I like the way she has recovered from the disappointment uh, at the Tokyo Olympics. Odoi so Adekure yeah. wins gold medal in the women's 57 kilogram freestyle wrestling for Team Nigeria, defeating our Indian opponent Anshu Malik 7-3. Uh, and that's it. What a way to respond when you're down. What a way to respond when you're down. And then you, you know her since when she came to the blocks to the, to the scenes, I beg pardon, since 2019 at the, um, the, uh, the interstate games that they do uh, regularly for every, I think every two, three years. She won the gold medal. She won, the, she won um, I think she won a silver gold medal in the previous Commonwealth. She has been winning medals. And then here, getting to the finals again, again winning the gold medal, I beg your pardon, it has been excellent for her. Adding that to our to our to our arsenal, that's fantastic for her, and that's why she that's why she will be able to get the neighborhood out there. All right, and that's the third one. Rus or Osoro also books a spot in the final, jumping a mark of 6.59 meters to finish joint seventh overall alongside Habigal Rosuru. Uh, and of course, she's also uh, moving uh, into that place where she can do something uh, in. Uh, that event and get something. So uh, our eyes will be on her as yes, well. Uh, she got to the final at uh, the World uh, Champs, yes, yes. wasn't in the medal position. Exactly. We'll see well, hopefully far. this one she will be able to get the medal. She should. And this is where we want to talk about. Uh, medal table, you have Australia, England, and Canada top three. Australia with 50 gold medal, 42 silver medals, 42 bronze medal with a total of 134. Forgive me if I want to skip quickly to Nigeria. Yeah. I want to skip quickly to Obviously Nigeria. Obviously, Nigeria, so you want to skip there. So you yeah, have seven gold, three silver, silver, six bronze, and a total of 16. You've told me your comments about whether or not you think uh, this is good enough at this stage. But you know what, Shegun? Let's get the thoughts of someone else. Alfred uh, is uh, with us. Alfred Okolibe, uh, greetings to you. Thanks for finding out time to be with us on the show today. We're having a robust discussion around the Commonwealth Games. We're all in a static mood. We're all very happy with what happened today. Two gold medals, expectedly, though, from two uh, very um, uh, you know, uh, important athletes in Team Nigeria. So, so far, so good. How's the Commonwealth Games been for you? I think it's been excellent. Um, seven gold medals at this time. And you're just scratching your head and you're looking at the numbers uh, so far. Um, uh, two of uh, the two gold medalists today talking about um, Blessing Oborojudu and Adekuro are two of the best serial African, African champions. And they've given their best. They, they, in the world, they rank highly 
in the world. So you would have expected them to go that far. I think that kind of sentiment or those kind of feeling is the same I will have for the likes of um, uh, Toby Lover, Amusma, and um, AC Brume. They are the mix it up in the world. When it gets to the World Championship, they are perhaps one of the best, and so they, they, they should be the group to beat. I'm particularly happy for Odon Adekure, the disappointment of uh, the Olympics. Um, she just put it behind her. Um, incidentally, in her weight category, she's ranked number three. The Indian is ranked number one, and it just shows you that um, she was just a bit, like you said, composed performance. Um, uh, took her really, really, uh, purity I could, I, I could, I'm sure would have done some kind of psychological work uh, on um, the coach. Um, she just calm. She knew the business that needed to be done, and she did it excellently. And so, so, so far, um, I would expect that we get as many gold as possible. Um, seven for now. I wouldn't bet against it getting to 12. All right. In the midst of the celebration, um, should we, you know, I asked you the other time if this was going to be a turning point for then it was athletics, now Nigerian sports. We're seeing that we can do well if you do if we do the right things. Do you, is do, is there still that tendency that after these Commonwealth Games we'll let some of those things we consider to be gains slip away? So we, we we've talked about how we seem to prepare for the next championship each time a, an event ends. Um, the next big uh, event for. Uh, multi sports like this, the Olympics, and then Paris 2024. If you don't have a plan at this time for that event, it means that you're starting like two, three years late. Um, so I would have, ex I would expect that um, some of the games that we met so far, don't forget that this is the Commonwealth Games, it's not the World Championship, it's not the Olympics. And so you expect that some of the best round, um, some of those countries that used to give us a problem, no good for multi sports like this. And all right. But this is a significant. Um, improvement. It just shows what investment in athletes can do. We've not, um, we're not about the best in terms of um, giving support to our athletes. If if we can give them this kind of support, which in itself is not the best, and uh, they come up with this, so you just imagine when you sit back and you get the kind of support that other athletes get. You, earlier you mentioned South Africa, given the number of sports that they've entered. If you if you look at their performance and what they've given. You just know that, okay, there's a certain level that that kind of support. We have, naturally, we are talented people when it comes to sports. So if, um, and and it's a good bringer. I was watching, was it discussed yesterday? And I saw a certain Lawrence Okuye. I mean, you don't, there are no yeah. prices to tell you where it comes from. You want a silver in the discourse. Um, uh, we've seen names come up for other countries. And you look at those names, you say, no, this one is one of our own. It tells you that wherever we find ourselves and we're giving that right support, I, I, I mean, it would be a shame if people are yeah. like that. If we come back now and everybody, like Austin said, roll out their mats and roll out their beds and put their legs on the table and just decide to take his siesta, there's a whole lot to be to be done. And right. special commendation to um, Daniel Gali. He is shown that when it comes yeah. to wrestling, he knows his onions, he has the, uh, he has the athletes, is giving them support at his own level. The other day was lamenting about, I mean, an athlete that an Olympic silver medalist like uh, bless you know, um, Alfred, as we speak, there just, is no sponsor. Um, no, um, yeah, no Alfred, no let, let me put no you on hold. Alfred, behind an Olympic silver medal, and that in itself is uh, those are the, some of the issues that yeah. militate against our, our, our development in sport. We know government cannot do it. All right, the private sector has to has to really step, sure. uh, step into the ring and do something. These athletes need the, 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 okay. the, the, the need Alfred, support. Let me just quickly pause I have to put you on hold now. I, if you can hear me, I have to put you on hold. I'm, I'm enjoying the conversation. But, but we need to move on. We'll get more of your thoughts. I want to listen to two athletes from Team Nigeria's squad, uh, Ajoke Ojoma and Elizabeth Oshoba. I have quite a few things to say. We'll listen to that. We'll come back for more. Austin Okonakman is still with us. Alfred Okolibe is with us as well. And, of course, my man in the studio uh, with me, Shegun Vincent, also still with me. Let's listen to those two athletes. We'll come back for more on Sports Tonight. 
it's been a great experience and a very tough one but I thank God I give God all the glory I'm in the semi-final level now I want to say my people at home my fans they should expect good from me I'm coming up with a gold medal it was a tough fight but I give all I can then I, I give all my best to win the fight and I won wow it has been a very wonderful experience because I think in the last two years this is my first international tournament traveling outside the country of course we host many international tournaments in Nigeria that we just finished um, like the West African African Cup that was hosted last two months which I participated in but this place is another big is another big experience and exposure it's actually very different now here because you're playing with the top top players in Europe so it has been a very good experience ah, I played in the doubles I'm still on in the doubles I'm in the round of 16 in the doubles and also in the mixed doubles I'm in the round of 16 and it's actually getting tough and tough and tough but we are doing well we're on God <laughs> All right, Austin, uh, we have to come back to you. It's been a busy day. I know we have to let you go and rest. So, like they say in local parlance, one for the road <laughs> before we let you go. What should we be expecting tomorrow from Team Nigeria? More table tennis action. You listen to Ajoke Ojomo uh, saying they're getting ready for the doubles. So, the doubles action tomorrow. Aaron O'Quadri has also qualified for the men's singles a quarter final. So we're looking forward to that also. There'll be more track and field events. There'll be more wrestling for us to follow tomorrow. But right now, we're monitoring what's going on right here at the triple jump final. Ruth Osoro, at the moment, she's in the sixth position. Let's just hope that she'll put up jumps that will, you know, uh, take her to the medal zone. Samson Nathaniel just finished running the men's 400 meters with a time of 447 uh, seconds. He, he couldn't make it. He finished sixth in that one. Uh, so they make it to the final. Are uh, you listening to if I or he will be busy tomorrow in the men's super heavyweight uh, boxing event. Not just if I, uh, Esther will also be busy. Elizabeth or Shoba will also be busy. About four Nigerian wrestlers will be fighting tomorrow in the boxing event. So we're, we're looking forward to seeing what boxing can produce. But the guys are pumped up. They believe that they can make it to the final. So uh, hopefully by, by tomorrow, we should have more medals in the bag for Team Nigeria. But I'm so pumped up for Sunday. S.C. Brumet will be busy. Rufus Soro will be busy. And of course, the champ at the moment, Toby Amusong. All right. All right, that's it, Austin. I would have said go and, go and rest, enjoy the weekend, but I know you're going to be walking. So um, anyways, do your best and have some rest and go be there for us. Be our eyes and ears. We'll see you again next week. It's an action pack sort of sports. Good to be on the show, you and me. I'll see you guys next week. All right, that's our man, Austin Okun Akpen. Where it's happening in Birmingham, giving us updates. All right, still uh, with me in the Lagos studio is Shagun, and um, he talked about tomorrow. Talk about a boxer, talk about Ruth Tussoro. By the way, she's doing long jump, triple jump. Uh, talk about uh, Aaron Okodri uh, being in action. Talk, talked about uh, one of our athletes in 400. Uh, you know, so you, you look at that mix and, 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 and you think that there might still be chance to, to that will be a party shot on, on the Commonwealth. There might be chances to, to win some more medals tomorrow? Of course, there yeah, are chances to win some more medals. You know, we have people in the, at the semi-finals and the final yep. stages. I don't know, do you know what he can do. We've heard of his name over and over again. He's always, he, he, you know, he, you know, he has this fighting edge. It's like, it's like a beast, you know, it's like a super tanker, you yeah. know. It comes all out, you know. You couple, you couple, look at all the other artists that, you, that we have mentioned earlier on and the ones that are still there. You, you, you say that they have that fighting edge. They want to win this medal for the country. They want to show for their class on the, on, on the, on the, at the biggest stage. And that's why we, we have a big shot of winning a medal uh, in all these competitions I've mentioned uh, uh, earlier. All right. That's, our, uh, that's how we have to uh, leave the Commonwealth Games now. Let's move on to other things happening in your fast space. Amazing, rewarding, also entertaining world of sports. Let's go to uh, the, uh, of course, uh, the ITO Cup uh, round of 16 for the men and quarterfinal for the women. Very sure. Uh, the fixtures will come up uh, on the screen so that we can quickly uh, talk about it. I mean, the, the, the ITO Cup has been under the radar um, mm. 
of course, you can understand uh, the top sporting events happening. We've not had a chance to. I think we're all through the other week, it was, we're talking about Toby Amosho, S. Yeah, Brumet, yeah. all the way. So it's, it, we, we've not really had a time to uh, talk about it. But it's upon us, round of 16. It's upon us. And you look at what happened last year, you know, the same thing winning both the female and the male. And then this year, we're having some very national run United. A couple of teams, you know, uh, showing that, that people they can win it and they can usurp the. Uh, the current champion. So let's try a pass out for All them right. and then probably uh, we're probably going to have a win winner. Okay, let me run through the fixtures quickly. Again, Green Beret for the men. We'll start with the men. Green Beret will take on Niger Tonelos. Lobby Stars will take on Akure City. Heartland will take on Dakada FC. Sunshine Stars will take on Katsina United. Hakwa United will take on Kogi United. DMD FC will be up against. Um, Kano Pillars, Alkanemi will be up against Wiki Torres. Insurance will be up against Nasarawa United. Let's flip and talk about the ladies yeah. quickly as we can. Of course, Bayaso Queens will be up against Abia Angels. I, I need to say again for emphasis, they are at the quarterfinal stage, the men in the round of 16. So that's it. Uh, you have Nasarawa Amazons up against Confluence Queens, Delta Queens up against Heartland. Queens, then Royal Queens will be up against FC Robo Queens in the quarterfinal for the uh, latest. All right, let me go to Alfred quickly. He's back with us. Alfred, Alfred, and let's just talk about the ITO Cup. You've seen the fixtures, interesting fixtures. Uh, of course, uh, my guests in the studio uh, talking about the men, uh, saying there are some teams that look like they might use up the, that the position that the big boys usually occupy, and that's the spirit of this this competition. So, which of those <laughs> new boys do you think we should pay attention to, especially now that any nobody has anything to lose? Let me show us our opinion. Um, they, they qualify for the Premier League. Um, the state is excited about the Nigerian Premier League. Uh, they had two teams. Unfortunately, the feeder team had dropped out in the last round. Uh, um, against against um, a, a Premier League opposition, they want to uh, I mean, the FA Cup, or the um, Federation Cup, coming at, uh, coming at this time. Uh, this is, for most, for most teams, after the uh, end of the season, it's like the off-season for them. Perhaps if you look at the scheduling, because the moment the league ends, everybody is thinking of holidays, and I have seen one or two teams at this competition. Rivers United, for example, didn't play. Plateau United didn't even bother. So, uh, I mean, if we have, it would have been played during the season itself, uh, maybe the result elsewhere might, might have been different. So, um, some very, very interesting um, premiership clash, Dakada, for example, against Atlanta, Atlanta um, against all odds. Um, and these Rangers from this competition in the last round, so they will be kicking themselves already. The red and so that's something that will play in their head. Um, that, that's the beauty of the of the Federation Cup or the FA Cup. And uh, uh, so anybody can anybody can be beaten. So for some players and some teams, this is an opportunity for them um, to you know day in the sun. They <laughs> say day in the sun. Um, get one. And perhaps yeah. and because of the price, and that price is playing on the continent, I'm sure that is what most teams are looking at. All right. That is what most teams are looking at. All right, Alfred, um, let me just throw this at you. Since, since you're still with me, I, I, I'll go back to Shego. English Premier League started today, 85 minutes of football. It, uh, of course, Arsenal and Crystal Palace. A goal from Gabriel Martinelli has given Arsenal the lead in the 20th minute, 85 minutes of football. I mean, what can we say? It's too late already. Um, just my corner here. I can see the monitor there. Arsenal, Arsenal just made it too. Um, wow. Um, I mean, the, the bookmakers favored Arsenal to get this one. They had a fantastic preseason. Um, um, of course, the players, the additions that they had in the team, the likes of um, Gabriel Jesus just made a difference in that team. So, um, against the Crystal Palace, and, and indeed, the former captain of Arsenal, Vieira, they've never lost, uh, Vieira has never lost to Arsenal since um, he did the job. <laughs> so, but maybe this is one for Atesa to get one over him, but it's good that EPL is back. Hey, 
what we can without the EPL at so it's exciting times. All right, exciting times. All right, Alfred, stick around. Uh, let, let me go back to uh, my friend with me here. You want to say a good start for Arsenal? Uh, a good start it looks for like Arsenal. they're going to win this. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, yeah, um, Martinelli missed the sitter in the first half. Uh, Zinchenko getting that assist for Martinelli in the first half. Wonderful result, no doubt. Winning preseason games. Gabriel setting up, um, settling in well. Zinchenko settling in well. Um, what the, the uh, Vera, the guy that he bought that is injured, that hasn't played yet. Um, Saliba coming back from loan. You know, he's a, he's a, he's a player that, um, at some point, there were rumors that Atleta didn't want him. They wanted to get yeah, on loan. That he wanted to play in the league and all of that. But he has come in well, and he's coming well, I beg your pardon, um, settling, settled in well, scored, scoring the goals, the confidence is high, and of course, the more games you win, the more the confidence you have. Well, let's talk about the fixtures now. It looks like um, Arsenal, a lot of people said, this was how you started last season and it crumbled. Funny but, enough, yeah. last season, the first three games, they didn't win the first three games until yeah. they won the, 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 third, the third game, the fourth game, fourth game. against Norwich with a 1 0 by go by uh, Premier Grammy Young. Um, you look at, what, look, at, look at this season right now, Aston starting the season on the bank. Yeah. You know, um, against Patrick Vieira, the past, Aston not won their past two games against Crystal Palace. So winning this is a, more like a game changer for them. Okay. Is it. The end result, no. We are only we are already starting, so we still have thirty seven more weeks. So more are we going to say they are stronger now? I, of, course, of course. Look at what is happening right now. Okay. You you have to say only a madman will say they are not stronger now. So, but let's see how it pans out for them, and then hopefully they have a, better, a good season. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Um, let's take a look at the fixtures. Fulham. Uh, we take on Liverpool. Matches to be played tomorrow. Fulham take on Liverpool. I uh, have Bob Mott who take on Aston Villa. Leeds United barely escaped last season. Uh, take on Wolverhampton Wanderers. Newcastle will take on Nottingham Forest. A lot of people love this team at their back in the English Premier League. Tottenham taking on Southampton. What, what, what a fixture that will be as well. All of these matches we played on Saturday. Let's go what's going to happen on Sunday. On Sunday, you have Everton taking on Chelsea. That's going to be huge. Uh, of course, Frank Lampard uh, hosting his former team. Leicester City, and now without Casper Michael, will take on Brentford. Manchester City will take on Brighton. West Ham will take on Manchester City. Alfred, the colleague is with me. Uh, for your parting shot, Alfred, what are the games to watch out for? It looks like Arsenal has run away with this, so let's forget that. Uh, which, which games do you think will get us stalking? I know it's the first game for everybody, but which ones uh, should we look out for? I'm thinking Everton, Chelsea, maybe? I, 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 in fact, you took that out of my mouth um, because um, Frank Lampard had to beat... Um, uh, we never had to beat Chelsea last season to survive the drop. And so it will be interesting to see how um, Chelsea shape up after the post um, Abramovich era. I, I mean, um, some of the business that they wanted to do during the off season was at, at some point hijacked by somewhere where like uh, each time um, uh, Chelsea makes an inquiry, Barcelona comes in. So it will be interesting to see how uh, they shape up the post term Abramovich era. So that's one game I think has something on it, and it's, it's a game to see for Manchester United. Um, for Ten Hag, new and uh, new, um, new season, a uh, new uh, busy team that is for training. They're looking for um, where they will get inspiration from. So, uh, watching Manchester United, of course, we all know how strong they are if, if they if they. Uh, really, um, uh, in, their, in their games, we you know uh, Manchester United is one of those I can always win the bet. Lately, the calling of the wagon and so, so those are some of the two teams I really want to see. Um, this, uh, this weekend. all right, uh, very cool. We all thank you for your time on the show today. Hopefully, we'll do this again next week. The pleasure is mine, always. All right, as our friend, a colleague, babe. All right, uh, Shagu, uh, we're on. We're on the road to um, wrapping things up on the show. But let, let me give you a minute. What are the fixtures that jump out at you uh, in the English Premier League? Um, the first one will be the Chelsea, um, the Everton Chelsea game. You know what happened last year? Everton won that game by solo goal. So Chelsea have, have a pound for, uh, for a pound of revenge. You know, Chelsea too are a, a size and they're in trying times, you know, and they need prayers, you know. I think I'll be praying for them too. Uh, you look at the Man U game, Man U against Brighton, Brighton does not score Corella, and then Man U are trying, they are a side, you know, there's ascendancy, change of coach, a couple of players coming and there, you know, how do they settle in and all of that they've had the not so bad um, preseason, you know, once a couple of games, lost one or two, I think lost a game in the preseason. So um, we'll have to look at that. Aston just won today, you know, they're probably like three, 
four minutes, four, four minutes away from that. The match against West Ham game, we saw what happened at the last game of the season last season, that they had to come back from two goals down to win in the Premier League. Haaland coming in there, Julian Alvarez, Kavfilis, he had to make his um, debut appearance because he didn't play in the competition shield. So these are games that we want to look at. Um, Chelsea too, um, a couple of other things around that. And then Sports against Shalom team, Sports just signed Ivan um, you know, yeah. a couple of players coming in here and there. Right. Hurricane, the, the deadly Hurricane son, Kulusevsky, you know, and also got Richarlison, you know. So um, this is a side that um, they are the underdogs. And uh, a lot of room people are tipping them to also okay. find a way to assault maybe Man City and Liverpool for the title. Liverpool game two against Fulham. You know what happened? The last game against uh, Liverpool against Fulham, they didn't win. So um, a couple of players there, Nunes coming in, Selimane leaving. Uh, does it change the dynamics of the team? Time will tell us, I guess, that. All right. But um, Van Dijk, you know, a couple of players. And uh, Konat is injured. Alisson is back in the squad. So uh, these are um, issues around the team right now. Let's see a puzzle for such teams. Yeah. Especially on, on after this the first day. Yes, on this note, we wish them well. That's all. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Shaggo Vincent, I want to thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you very on much. On the show today. Thank Good debut, much. I must say. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. That's the show today. We do hope that you've enjoyed everything we've been able to bring to you. We'll be back again next week. Hopefully, uh, Nigeria would have... Uh, gone very high on the medal table at the Commonwealth Games, and by then it, it will have ended and we'll come to do a post mortem of it. That's the show. Enjoy your weekend. We'll be back here again next week. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Bye bye now.